Welcome to Loving Truth. We're talking about the best way to pray. And I think one of the most helpful things is for us to remember the word ACTS, A-C-T-S, which we use as an acrostic. So our first movement in prayer as we bow our heads is to remember the person we're praying to. Adoration. The second thing that is helpful for us to do is to confess. That's what the C stands for. Confession. Now, the word confession could refer to a statement of faith, like in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you will confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So this is a statement of faith. But we're not talking about that although it's good to make a statement in faith while you're praying, but we're talking primarily about confession of sin, the admission of our own personal wickedness, iniquity, and transgression. Think of this verse, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Notice this promise is conditional. If we confess, then he will forgive. The word confession here is a Greek word that simply means saying the same thing about something. So it means that we're agreeing with God that sin is sin. His evaluation, his definition, not ours, but his. We agree that what we have done God clearly states, is wrong. Now, there's going to be sorrow as well because we realize that we have offended a holy God, a hallowed God. But the idea of confession is merely agreeing and acknowledging, yes, we have sinned. It's admitting and judging our own actions and accepting full responsibility, like David did when he confessed his sin in Psalm 51. Blot out my transgressions, wash me from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. If we are honest, we can't get away from our sin. We see it all the time. We're confronted with it at every turn, every day. And so what we need to do if we want real forgiveness is to go to the Lord and confess our sin as sin. You've probably heard it said that confession is good for the soul, and in a sense, that's true. But I'm afraid that phrase is used more as a psychological evaluation of simply acknowledging you've done something wrong. Confession is good for the soul when we acknowledge to a holy God we've sinned and we trust for his forgiveness. We rely upon his atonement to wash us. True to his word, if we confess our sin, he is faithful. He is reliable, and he will forgive our sins. He's just. Now, it doesn't seem like justice and forgiveness should be mentioned in the same sentence, because if we got what we justly deserve, we would be condemned. But what it means is that Jesus justly offers forgiveness. He's made a promise, and he will justly fulfill that promise. Literally, he is faithful to his word, in order that he might forgive us of our sin. And then I like what John Stott says about 1 Corinthians, uh, or excuse me, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. The Lord sees a debt that he remits and a stain that he removes. He is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And how does that happen? With an honest heart that is broken because and convicted because we've gone against God. And a heart that humbly submits. A contrite heart God will not despise, Psalm 51 says. So we confess our sin and he gives us great forgiveness. Make that part of your prayer as well. Heavenly Father, open our eyes that we might see your truth and enter into a life of prayer that is biblically accurate 
that fits into the teaching of prayer in Scripture and brings personal salvation and forgiveness to our souls. In Jesus' name, amen.